Hi YouTube, welcome back to the final video in my fountain pen collection video. These are going to be my steel nib pens, and I will say that I have many pens, you know, 10 or so, maybe more, um, steel nib fountain pens that I no longer have in my possession. Either my son is using them, or I don't know where they are, or something like that. So that includes mostly Pilot Metropolitans, a few um, Pilot Kakunos, um, Kaveco Sports, and Twisby Ecos. I had a handful, easy, of um, Ecos and Kaveco Sports. So my son has them, most of them. And then I had a Lamy Studio, and I didn't realize how how annoying the metal grip would be until I had it, and so that bothered me enough that I actually gave the pen to my husband. So without further ado, let's start with all of the fun Twisbies. Um, I will say that when it, when it comes to the nib, the Eco nib is by far my favorite because it's not as thick. I do find that the the, the Eco nib is just, it's slightly finer and it's not as juicy. Um, dry is a bad word in pen, so I don't really want to say dry, but it is my preferred writing experience to these. So um, actually I should differentiate. I forgot about my back mini. I should differentiate a couple of these. These I'm going to put in a different category. So this, these two are the mini, and this is the vac mini. The vac mini is just a tad bigger. Um, this one is uninked. So let me just look at this mini. It's a really beautiful size. I'm really, really impressed with how well this writes. I won't use it for, you know, six months, and then I'll come back, and it always starts right up, and it's just beautiful. So in this pen, I have Colorverse Apollo, which is just... A solid, nice, darker blue color. And it's just a nice ink. This is a Twisby, this is a fine. I think this is a size 5 nib. It's pretty small. But, you know, I'm really pleased with this. It, it just handles beautifully. No complaints whatsoever. Here is the Vac Mini. And it's slightly bigger than the mini. I do find that the need to open up the back a little bit to let air flow. Kind of annoying. You can still post it. Twist post, which is nice. It's a nice pen, I will say. And here I have Jacques Urbain. Urbain. Kianit. Kianit. Du. Nepal. Okay, so this is a great, this is a shimmery blue ink. It's really nice. Again, I, uh, for whatever reason, I do find this additional, this extra need to open up this area. I guess I get a little paranoid because I'm afraid I'm going to forget and keep it open. I don't know if that's a problem, but... Oh, and anyways, this was also a fine nib. These, most of my Twispies are fine nibs because those are just my favorites. Now... These 580s, I have, I do think that they are bigger. They're supposed to be nicer. The diamond, this sort of faceted barrel right here is actually really nice, but I do not like them as much as I like the Ecos and even as much as the Minis because the nib is different. The nib is broader and just wetter, and some people love that. I most certainly do not. So this is the, the purple... ALR, which means it has this ridged grip here, grip section. This is a fine, but you'll find that this is a much thicker fine. So this um, ink in here is Diamine November Rain. And I just, I find this to be really thick. It does sheen beautifully. It's like um, Organic Studio. Is it called Walden Pond? think. I don't remember. As it dries, it'll shade a little bit more beautifully. This green emerald one, it's just the normal grip section. It's not the ridged. This one is a stub, and I'm going to be honest, I really dislike this stub. I have many stubs. I find this one. This one also has um, Jacques Urbain. Oh my gosh, look at this. Oh my gosh. Um, emerald of Chavour. Emerald of 
Shivar. Um, you can just see it. It dumps, just dumps ink. I really dislike how that happens. I am not somebody that likes ink to just dump in this manner. It is super juicy. As this dries, it will look fantastic. But this sort of what I consider really uncontained dumping of ink is just, in a strange way, it's really distressing to me. So yeah, I don't, I do not like that. And I do not use this pen. I should actually clean it out before it gunks up too much. But, so those are my Twisbees. Now let me move on to one that I just adore. This one is a pen 18111 handmade just beautiful beautiful um this is the i think this is falling sakura or sakura blooms and just it is hard to explain how beautiful this is you really should you know and you need to see it up up close with a little stopper up here a sakura stopper it's just lovely in here is a i think this is a size six steel nib in a 1.1 stub this is actually a lovely stub in here I have Pilot Hiroshizuku. Uh, this one is Amairo. I find this much more manageable to the sink, but wow. Look at the shading and shimmer on that one. I don't know if you can see it, but that is something else. But I do prefer this. This one writes more reasonably. These are supposed to be the same size, incidentally, which is kind of laughable to me. Anyways, I do enjoy using this pen, particularly for headers and things like that, but it's really nice. And it's absolutely beautiful. The craftsmanship on this is great. Um, now moving to one that I really kind of consider, <laughs> I guess, somewhat folly, but it's kind of hard to say. Say folly, this is the Montegrappa. Um, Harry Potter series. This is not specific to a single house. This is all four houses, the Hogwarts houses. Um, I, this is completely a whim. I bought this on a whim. It's a lot of money to spend on a whim. What I do follow, I'll say a couple things about this. This is a very heavy pen. The heaviest pen in my collection easily. And so I find that this is not a good pen to use for long writing sessions. But I will say, like the filigrees, there are, there is beautiful detail on this pen. There's no doubt about it. There's the, the Hogwarts crest on the, the cap. If you look at the nib, this Monterapa nib is just beautiful. And even this grip section, which looks like it would be annoying and dig in. Not at all. In fact, I do not like metal grips. Um, like as I said earlier, I really disliked the Lamy Studio and gave that to my husband. But I find that because of this etching in this metal grip, it doesn't slide, slip and slide as much as it did with the Lamy. So I do find this really nice. Even back here, I don't know if you can see, there's etching. And it's just like, there's, there's a lot of pretty detail on this. And I really like it. I do think it's an expensive pen for what it is. I'm not sure I would buy it again. But when I pick it up, I smile and I enjoy using it. So that's something. This is in a fine. Steel fine. This is a Pilot Hiroshizuku. This is a Kompeki. And it is very fine, actually. For being a Western nib, it is very fine. So this is a pleasant nib. I like it for quick notes. There's that. This one I want to talk about. I picked this up from a lovely lady at the San Francisco Pen Show last year. This is my only vintage pen and my only lever fill pen. Right, um, this is the first time I'd seen one. Right, you, um... You pull that out, this lever out, it depresses, I think, like a balloon inside, and it creates a suction, and then you, you put it in ink, you let go, and it sucks up ink. I don't know how much gets sucked in there. I tend to always um, syringe fill my, my cartridges, so um, and then I can see exactly how much goes in. I can't tell how much is in here, but, um, and, you know, this is an Estra, sorry, I didn't say what this was. This was an Estrabrook. I don't remember what this is called. I think this is the dollar pen. And this is actually a really beautiful pen. And I got to choose my nib, which was incredibly overwhelming. There's so many beautiful different nibs. 
This one, what nib was this? This is a, I don't know if you can see this. I think this says 2442. I think it was supposed to be like a type of stub. It kind of looks like it, like an oblique stub. I'll say a couple things. I think this nib is hard to use for whatever reason. There's just like a interesting variation in the nib that I found a little finicky, but in terms, the, there is no doubt about it. This nib was like butter. This nib is amazing. It is so pleasant to write with. I really, really loved it. Actually, I should ink it up again because it's not inked, but um, it's really lightweight and it's got some sort of etching here that says Estherbrook, made in USA. So yeah, this is really lovely. And I love that I have a vintage pen and it's a really lovely pen. Yeah. And I think it's this clip design that really made it what it was called. Which is the dollar pen. It has beautiful like shimmer or sparkle or something. Not sparkle. But whatever it is, it's really nice. <clears throat> now I have two. They're different, but let me show them together. These are little pocket pens. This one is the, it's really tiny. This one is the Kaveco. Lilliput in the fire, uh, fire hand fired steel, and so it comes out in this beautiful variation of like blues and purples and golds and coppers. Um, my husband got this for me for our 11th wedding anniversary because that's the steel anniversary, and I had envisioned carrying this around um, to sign, just to take quick notes in my bag and stuff like that. It does say um, Kaveco here. I think it says Lilliput. It's hard to read, actually. Oh, made in Germany. And a beautiful engraving at the top. Oh, my goodness. I'm not even in the camera. Beautiful engraving at the top. And I don't know if you can see that. The one thing I do find, I will say this, the metal grates on the metal. And if you're sensitive to that, this, even just like the thought of threading this in the back makes me kind of shudder because it is so hard to hear. But when it when you screw it on, it does make it quite a bit longer. Very usable for my hands, very usable. And it's a small, extra fine nib, but works beautifully. I, in here, I think I have a Faber-Castell, oh, it's drying out, but I think this is a Faber-Castell um, carbon black. It's supposed to be good for signing and things like that. The ink is not awesome but um anyways this is a, a cute little pen that you know honestly I don't use a whole lot because I'm, I'm just kind of like I cringe at the thought of doing threading that um winding up that thread now this is a shin design pen the design I think is called melted crayon I got to choose that it's beautiful it's another little pocket pen there's some kind of rubber or something somewhere such that when I start threading back here, it doesn't it doesn't grind in that way. It's not that metal metal grind. It doesn't happen, and is very easy and much more pleasant. It is a lot lighter than this. This is a steel pen, so it's got good heft. This one is very light because I think it's aluminum. But this pen, this Shin Design pen, has a number six nib. Look at how awesome that is. That's so cool. I think this is a Bach nib. Oh boy. And I got it in a medium, and I regret that. A Western Bach medium is just way too broad for me. In here, I have a Mont Blanc. Uh, lavender purple. Yeah, this is too broad. But this is a really cute pen. And I do want to get a different one that's not um, so broad. So those are my steel nib pens. If you have any questions or want me to do an in-depth uh, review of any of my pens um, from any of my videos, just let me know. I'd be happy to do that. Um, hope you liked it. Have a good day. Bye.